Hey, 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 and welcome back to the channel, everybody. How are you all doing well? In today's video, you guys are in for an absolute treat. A few days ago, I was contacted uh, on YouTube in a comment by a fellow who saw uh, one of my hoarding videos, and he left a very encouraging comment uh, to me regarding um, the way I was going about doing this port, you know, that, uh, yep, do it your way, do it low buck, and what I'm doing is going to get me some pretty good gains. Then he uh, went on to leave another comment outlining um, some basic combustion chamber chamfer mods that could be done on these particular cylinder heads, the Aussie closed chamber 2V302 cast iron factory cylinder heads on de-shrouding valves the cylinder head. So before we go any further, because this guy has gone above and beyond since uh, those comments, I've now connected with him on Messenger, and because um, I asked him to uh, look me up on Facebook because I wanted to talk to him more about these mods, um, and he very generously uh, contacted me. This is how much of a legend this guy is, right? This guy has worked in this industry, guys, for 20 years. He's worked on uh, old American cylinder heads, Australian Ford stuff, Holden, some six-cylinder stuff. He's even worked on Chrysler stuff. He's had his own business doing this for 20 years. And this morning, uh, he went out to his workshop. He's got a set of these 302 cylinder heads that he's about to port. He painted them up in yellow, as he does, um, to set, up, set these up for de-shrouding. And he took uh, basically 30 pictures. He, he, he did the work this morning. Um, and took pictures of each uh, element of the work that's done to do shroud particularly um, this is specific to this Aussie 302 cylinder head and he went through the process of what he does to do shroud the valves in uh, the 302 heads uh, with a picture by picture um, uh, basis okay showing me some simple tools that uh, anyone watching this video is going to have lying around in their workshop that you can use to basically help you uh, do a really good de-shrouding job on these cylinder heads, which will give you a uh, marked improvement on flow and give you some detonation resistance um, with these heads, because these are pretty, pretty famous for being pretty bad with detonation, okay? Now, initially when I uh, was talking to him and looking through the pictures, I started to feel a little bit nervous because, um, you know, I've never done this sort of mod. The, the last set of heads that I ported um, I've only supported one set of heads previous, as I've already mentioned in my other videos. I have never done this type of modification to the combustion chambers. I've simply done what I did uh, that I've already shown in the previous videos without doing any major chamfering. Even though I've seen um, uh, this chamfer stuff on forums before, um, and it is something that is done. I mean, these are reasonably generic um, shaped um, combustion chamber for a lot of cylinder heads. So it's, you know, this is done on uh, other cylinder heads other than just these 302 Ford uh, cylinder heads. So I was aware that you could do this though, you know, I didn't really sort of understand it and how um, they came up with the angles of chamfer, etc. Um, and, you know, being a little bit sort of, you know, anal and a bit nervous about increasing the combustion chamber size, I sort of thought I'm not going to bother doing that, right? But this guy, uh, kudos to you, Craig. His name is Craig. He hails from uh, Adelaide here in Australia. So he's a fellow Aussie. And what he did this morning, going out and spending the time to do that, documented in, in pictures and show step by step how to work this out is just next level. I mean, you know, he, he took the risk of sharing that with me uh, and then me coming on my channel and basically making out that, you know, this is all my idea. I wouldn't have had a clue how to do this. Uh, without someone like him, who's done this many, many times and knows what he's doing, uh, sharing that information with me and now with my viewers. So I can't thank you enough, Craig. Thank you so much, mate, for sharing that info. I'm going to go through uh, all of Craig's pictures that he sent me this morning. There's 30 of them in total with all the steps um, that he uh, uses to basically work out where the chamfering etc needs to happen um, on these heads to guard against detonation and also to drastically improve your flow. Craig says that this mod alone can uh, net you um, big power gains and, and flow gains um, even if you weren't to do 
some of the, the other work. Well, I've done the other work. I'm going to do the other work. With this mod, I'm going to get a really, really good uh, result. If I can do it, it might give uh, anyone else watching the videos the confidence to have a crack at doing this as well. I'm definitely going to do this because it's going to be the next step in uh, my experience with porting these cylinder heads uh, compared to my last port where I didn't do any of this work. Let's have a look at Craig's picks and go through uh, how we work out and where we're going to de-shroud these valves in the Aussie 2V closed chamber cylinder head. Now something very, very important for me to point out and Chris asked that I would actually stress this. You need to keep in mind that he really put this together very quickly for me this morning. Just came out basically and started uh, running his uh, carbide cutter around the combustion chamber here for the purposes of me using this in the video. Who does that? I mean, what a top guy. But he wanted me to emphasize that after this is done, and this is fairly rough because of the, um, uh, you know, it was it was done in a hurry, but this always gets smoothed basically after the carbide burr is used. He will then spend uh, the time needed to basically then, with a stone, smooth everything that's been cut with the chamfer so it's all really smoothed, along with uh, the rest of the combustion chamber inside, similar to what I did basically in uh, my first video on how I smooth all the cast and, and those lips and stuff from the machine surfaced when the, when the valve seats are put in. So just keep that in mind guys, all of this uh, is normally smooth with a stone after all the basic cutting and de-shrouding is finished with the carbide burr. So the way Craig goes about this is first he paints up his cylinder head so then when he puts his head gaskets on he can scribe uh, where his head gasket opening is around the combustion chamber without actually obviously scratching into the cylinder head surface. You don't want to do that, otherwise then you'll be milling uh, your cylinder head. So this is how he starts, just with a light coat of uh, yellow paint is what he uses for visibility. And here you can see uh, the scribe mark around the uh, head gasket opening and this gives you uh, basically where your tolerances are uh, and the amount of material you have to, to de-shroud the valves back to you. You don't want to exceed this. Now Chris is showing me here basically what to use as simple tools to find our chamfer angle and how to set up our chamfer angles, uh, how to get our, our, our valves at the right height and stuff like that to work out our chamfer angles. Everyday stuff that you'll be able to find in your tool shed. For example, here we have a carburetor rod ball, okay? The main thing is that these things, the Allen key and uh, a ball, even if it's a ball bearing welded to like a little stem or something, they must be a quarter inch in size. So with the Allen key under the valve and flat on the face of the cylinder head, you're gonna use that little quarter inch ball to run around the valve and where you find the ball will not fit in between the seat and the valve like this, you'll know that you will need to shroud that area, but not exceed where you have marked your head gaskets. Okay, and you can basically keep moving that ball around the valve and where you find that it doesn't fit in between the uh, opening of the valve and the cylinder head face, you need to mark that and that's where you will begin your de-shrouding process. In these areas where your quarter inch ball will not fit in between the face of the head and the valve opening. You can see here where Chris has determined the two points of reference that the shroud is, is going to have to take place between. And it's these points of reference uh, around your combustion chamber that you are trying to determine where de-shrouding has to be done. This is a pic showing just how bad the shrouding is on the exhaust valve. We can't fix this properly and we wouldn't spend the time trying to fix this, um, otherwise it's going to turn this into a very long process indeed. We're going to do the quick stuff uh, that we uh, can do for the limitations that these heads have from their factory design. But this is just showing uh, what the limitations are and what we can actually do and can't do in these uh, factory combustion chambers. This is a pic uh, of the exhaust valve on the spark plug side of the combustion chamber. A little bit of work can actually be done in this area and we will do a little bit of work here. Uh, now this is a pic 
of an overview basically of what Chris does to every single combustion chamber. Um, if he's not doing, even if he's not doing any other shrouding, he will do this basic shrouding. Uh, take note of the wide and narrow chamfer around the combustion chamber in this pick. Uh, the narrow is a basic flat chamfer, and the wider work, guys, is a nice gentle radius, basically to the top of your cylinder head, to the face of your cylinder head. A nice gentle radius. Here's some better shots of how to do that gentle radius where it's quite wide there. And then uh, how you just do you know, a basic chamfer to the right there. And where you see that circle, this is the classic uh, nasty detonation area on the intake valve uh, that we want to try and uh, remove some uh, material there in the chamber to mitigate detonation. And that gets a light blend out to the gasket line to open out that little crevice there that traps lean air fuel mixture. And you've got to keep in mind that um, this means that you are going to be able to uh, increase your timing if you can, uh, you know, do work like this. It's going to give you the ability to also, you know, advance your timing a bit, which will pick up power where you might lose a bit of power. And it's going to be like, you know, it's going to be negligible power you're going to lose from these small amounts of stuff that we're removing from the combustion chambers. But you should, in theory, be able to increase your timing a little bit um, because you're removing some of this stuff, which is going to help you control detonation with these cylinder heads. So check out uh, these pics now, guys, of uh, basically what Craig did this morning. And uh, do not hesitate in the comments to say a big thanks to Craig from Adelaide for providing this information to uh, all of us Aussie 2V302 cylinder head owners. And don't forget what I said earlier, guys, is to really get the optimum results from this work, you need to run over these carbide cutout parts, guys, with a stone and smooth this so it's nice and smooth. Here's some before and after pics of how things should look after you've done your de-shrouding. Here's a before and an after on the exhaust valve. Take note of how he's got the Allen key set up on the face of the head. And a before and after on the intake valve. Pretty significant improvement once the de-shrouding has been undertaken. So a very fortuitous connection made via the internet uh, with uh, my new friend Craig who uh, has been so willing to share his knowledge uh, with me and now uh, via the wider community, um, thanks to YouTube I guess, um, he's um, provided information there and knowledge that you know I just didn't have, you know I don't have with this sort of thing, he's been doing this for years and that is now going to be passed on and it's really great to meet another lover of old school Aussie iron. Well, guys, I'm not going to do any more in this video. In our next video, we will put the carbide to the metal and we will start uh, with these modifications on my cylinder heads. And until I see you guys in the next video where we start doing this, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there.